Jimmy Thang with Maximum PC here at Intel's suite at CES 2015. I'm here speaking with Francois, and Francois, you guys are releasing uh, Broadwell. Can, uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, so we just completed the 14 nanometer processor and now we are rolling it for the world to use it. So we have plenty of devices with Core M and uh, Broadwell U coming out uh, at CES. So I invite you to go around and, and play with them. They are pretty awesome. And uh, right now with uh, Broadwell, you guys are sort of focusing more on like more mobile devices, uh, notebooks, and uh, like nux sized uh, devices and things like that. Um, can you talk a little bit about uh, that? And are we going to see it in like the desktop form factor as well? So, you know, I can't talk much about the desktop right now because, uh, you know, we are right in the middle of the, the, the mobile launch. But yes, you will definitely get some cool stuff out of uh, Broadwell on desktop. Uh, so in regards to, uh, you know, uh, Broadwell, the, you know, the mobile stuff like that, what kind of performance increase uh, might we expect? Uh, what kind of TDP and what kind of battery life? So TDP wise, we are doing about the same things for that than before. So we are going to stick to 15 watts for the U series uh, for the desktop. We are going to be around the way we are today as well. But you're going to get, uh, you know, on CPU, it's difficult to say, you know, uh, can be between 5 10 percent depending on what you do, what kind of workload you do. And then on graphic, you can go up to 20 percent, I think. I remember the number well. Uh, and then there's a special case where we actually have more boost, but you know, you, you guys will be able to benchmark this by yourself on the device that's coming out uh, now. And can you walk us through some of the SKUs? Because uh, right now you guys have, uh, starting at the bottom, it's sort of like uh, Broadwell M, I want to say. Uh, is that right? And then our, uh, and then it goes up to like Y, and then H, and then like I5 or. So we have we have basically the Broadwell Y already out. So it's called Core M, and it's already shipping. Uh, it's leading on 3D graphic. You know we have the best uh, SoC performance right now. Uh, then when you go to uh, the Broadwell uh, U, which is the ultra low voltage, we have it here in the Nook. Uh, this is performing, you know, really well. And since we have better transistors, we have more uh, performance coming out of it. But, you know, we're not going to talk today about the desktop much. We don't want to do that. The desktop is, you know, it's for another event. And we are going to have a lot of fun when it comes in. Uh, you saw the improvement on the mobile version. So desktop, we want to keep the surprise for later. Gotcha. So yeah, yeah um, so Core M is like the, sort of the, the lowest uh, performance, right? And then it goes uh, Y above that, or like the ultra low vo voltage. And then I think I want to say, is it H above that? Is that accurate? I don't want to comment about this. So Broadwell Y, uh, you know, we, we, let's talk about what we launched today. Uh, Broadwell Y is something that has this capability of being very, very reasonable in how much power you're using while being able to turbo really fast to high frequency, you know, up to 2.6 and 2.9 on, very, on the, the latest SKUs and give you the responsiveness you need. Okay, that's why we give you Broadwell in very small form factor, Broadwell Y, but that's core M. Now, if you want to do some sustained workloads, like you want to do some serious, you know, video editing or those kind of things, then we recommend that you go Broadwell U, which is what we are launching, the core i3, core i5, core i7. Those will give you steady performance for a long time without compromising the long time performance. Uh, and then if you really want to go and do some crazy, you know, super gaming or those kind of things, then we recommend that you go higher skew, you know, the extreme editions and all those kind of things that have some extra room to, to be able to do what you want, like gaming, like high-end video editing or high-end video encoding, you know, like very high quality. Use the, the you know, eight core machine we have out there. So, you know, we, we cover really from tablet up to super workstation now with the, 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 the core family. So the top end right now is still as well, but you know, we're going to roll those things out this year as well. Do you have like a rough estimate of when we can expect to see um, like gaming laptops with Broadwell? Um, that's question for the OEMs, not for me. You know, the processors. But you guys, you guys gave them the processors, right? Yeah, so we gave them the processors and now they're going to do whenever they want and whenever, whatever they want. Uh, I'm sure you're going to be happy very soon for high-end gaming laptops. Uh, we unroll first, you know, the dual core. So 
Right now, they are all working on making super slim, super sexy, you know, you saw the Dell XPS or the S7, those, those stuff, you know, the, the S7 uh, 393. Uh, those are really awesome laptops, super slim, but no compromise on performance for productivity or those kind of things. Now for gaming, you probably want a quad core, a bit more beefy, so right now you have as well, it is pretty awesome. Uh, and then Broadwell later this year. Gotcha, yeah, and to sort of touch upon what you mentioned before, um, like we're starting to see laptops that are getting extremely thin and extremely light. Um, how are you guys ac accomplishing that with Broadwell? So basically Broadwell need less power to do the same amount of work at the same speed. So what we do is we, we use Turbo to be extremely conservative on energy when we don't need the performance. And when you need the performance, we rise Turbo extremely quickly to give you responsiveness. So it's a matter of nanoseconds when you, when you want to go from uh, 800 megahertz or 1.1 gigahertz to 2.9. We have defined a couple of physical tricks we do in the motherboard that allow us to turbo very fast. And then we have designed the SOC as well to be able to do this. And when we put the two technology together, you get a computer that is able to react to your finger touch fast enough to turbo to the maximum frequency just by touching the screen. So those are what give you the responsiveness and that's what matter to users. Then when you want to sustain workload, we are, because we have very good transistors, we are able to sustain in the same power envelope for a lot longer than all of the other process technologies. So that's our advantage right now. Gotcha, and, and can we expect to see, you know, you guys are with Haswell, you guys really increased uh, battery life. Are you guys still on the same trajectory as well with Broadwell? So battery life is always uh, an interesting subject because battery life is a function of two things. It's function of the battery size, and it's function of the processor. Uh, so you saw that Dell with the XPS announced up to 15 hours of battery life and that means they have decided to put in this computer a, 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 a big battery the way we used to do it in the, in the Aswell device on the one before. But because we are saving more power, instead of 10 hours you get 15. So, you know, some do this choice, some do the other choice. You know, I just showed you the Panasonic uh, Super Ultra Light uh, PC that is 740 grams. So here what they did is they went with a 26 or 27 watt hour battery and you still last for five, six hours, but you put it in, you know, if a lady put it in her bag, she will not feel the laptop in the bag. So we give the flexibility to all of the OEM to design whatever they want. They can make a very long battery life or they can make a, a reasonable battery life, but they're being extremely light. That's the advantage of having 14 nanometer. Gotcha. Well, thank you, Francois. You're welcome. And, uh, have fun at uh, CES. Cool, will do. And for more uh, information on CES, check out MaximumPC.com.